Hey guys, and welcome back to the J Tour channel. And this is your match preview of the big one. The big one, you get me? Um, FA Cup final tomorrow at 4.45 p.m. kickoff time at Wembley Stadium. It is Chelsea versus Liverpool, the repeat of the League Cup final back in February, I think it was, just as the day um, Roman Abramovich said he was handing over the club um, to the, oh my God, was it the stewardship? And the bloody foundation, I think it was. The Chelsea foundation it was at the time. I can't even remember. Um, but that was literally the start of the whole process of the club being sold. And you know, now we got Todd Bowell, who's going to be the new owner. And apparently he's going to be at the game tomorrow. Hopefully uh, we can break this little curse we have where every time he's attended a game, we've literally not won. Um, Wolves, we drew the game. Um, he was there when we got slapped by Real Madrid. I think he was there, no, yeah. And there's other games, I think those are the only games he's been to and we haven't won. Um, so hopefully we break this curse tomorrow. It's at Wembley, so we're not at home, so that's a positive. Uh, but it's going to be a tough game tomorrow. Obviously, look, Liverpool are a great side. Um, you know, the points that they're on right now, I saw, I saw something on Twitter earlier on where they're on 86 points and a boy, like 10, 15, 20 years ago, that would have won them their league titles, which is just crazy. And it just shows the standards that Man City have just set for everyone else now. And what it really takes to win a Premier League title. You always have to get 90 plus points. Back in the day, bro, you could literally get like 79 points. That'd be enough to win you the league. I'm pretty sure that 99 treble team, Man United, that's probably one of the greatest teams we've seen um, in, English, in English football. I think that team only got like 79 points. You know, Liverpool would have just dumped that if it was back in the day so it just shows the standards of Man City and the way they've just pushed up the levels but also Liverpool have up those standards as well but it's just unfortunate for them that they just got a team in Man City that's just as good as them really but you know um, can we end their quadruple dream potentially tomorrow because let's be honest they can still win the league they just need Man City to lose one game Man City are in an injury crisis right now I saw that I think they, I think they, they're gonna have no centre backs for the game. Apparently, Laporte got an injury. There's no Ruben Diaz. Um, Fernandinho had to play centre back, so they're looking a bit weak at the back. Maybe West Ham might take advantage, and you'll see what happens with that in terms of the title race. But in terms of tomorrow, it's a huge game for both teams. Um, if Liverpool win this, their quadruple hopes are still alive, and they could actually just win a treble because they've won the League Cup. They could win this, and they could win the Champions League. And then for us, look. I feel like this, I don't want this trophy to determine our season, but I feel like it will in a way um, because I just feel like if we win the FA Cup, then it will be a season where, you know what, overall I say good season, a, a good season for me. If we don't win it, it's like, I'll be a bit disappointed. I'm going to be personally honest with you. I will be a bit disappointed with the season if we can't clinch this trophy tomorrow. Because at the start of the season, I did say I would like us to win at least one of the domestic trophies, League Cup or FA Cup. And I said, let's see if we can maybe clinch one of the Premier League and Champions League. I did say that at the beginning of the season. So to walk away with not winning any of them would be a bit disappointing, which is why I'm really hoping the boys know the magnitude of this game. Um, hopefully they turn up tomorrow and just be motivated, gunned up for the game. And, you know, we'll see what happens in terms of Thomas Tuchel and team news. Um, before I actually get into that, Liverpool, um, like I said, they're on for a treble, on for a quadruple still. Um, Fabinho is going to be out for the game, which could be huge. I would say he's probably their most important midfielder um, in terms of just like him being that anchor in the midfield. You know, he can he can pass a ball. Um, he's defensively so solid. He knows how to get away with a yellow card. I mean, his tactical fouls are just like Fernandinho's and I think they're going to miss that tomorrow as well, especially when we go on the transition potentially. You always see Fabinho in games where he just pulls down a man and, you know, he doesn't get a yellow card and he'll do it every single time and he'll do it for as long as possible and then he gets the yellow eventually. Like the Spurs game, for example. This guy committed like five, six fouls alone and he only got a yellow card in the 80th minute of the game. So that shows you what type of player he is, at least defensively, when it's time to actually like, you know... Um, get dirty with it, do you know what I'm saying? So he's going to be a huge miss for them tomorrow, but they've got Henderson to play there, who can play as a DM, just not as good, but Henderson can do a job there, if you know what I'm saying. So um, I guess they'll sort of be fine there. They'll have Thiago, they'll have Cater anyway. They've got Curtis Jones, you know, they've got Harvey Elliott. These guys are good players, man. So yeah, in terms of us though, team news-wise, Kalamontondo is obviously out. 
Um, and Ben Chilwell, obviously out, we all, know, we all know that already. Kante and Kovacic, very interesting what Tuchel said on both of them. Basically, um, Kovacic is looking like he's in training. Um, I saw a picture of him and Kante, they were both in training today. So that's good to see. And it looks like they'll both be in contention for tomorrow's game. One thing I found interesting that Tuchel said was um, somebody asked him if they are both fit for tomorrow pretty much, would you take the opportunity to play both in the final? And Tuchel was like, yes, we would have to take that risk. That sort of tells me what he's going to pick in terms of the midfield in a way. Um, and in terms of the front line, he pretty much confirmed that he's not going to play both Kai Havertz and Romelu Lukaku, which means one of them is going to miss out. And again, that also tells me a lot about which front three I think will genuinely play. So I feel like Tuchel in, in this press conference gave little clues here and there for what we could do. He also mentioned the situation of goalkeepers and, you know, if it goes to penalties, will he, will he play Kepa? Will he start? Will he bring on Kepa? Um, or will he stick with Mendy pretty much? And he said he has his opinion on it, but he's not going to tell people uh, the press. So it's interesting, Thomas Tuchel's press conference. Obviously, the Lukaku stuff today, um, his, his agent made comments about how he's going to talk to the board. And he was talking about how he's going to potentially start talking to AC Milan and Inter about negotiations and stuff like this. And it's like, once again, agents in Chelsea, like, ugh. now I can understand, even though RIP to him, now I can understand why Chelsea never wanted to do business with Mina Raiolo, because he, he just would have been bickering a lot. And the fact that you've seen Jorginho's agent do this many times, and now you've seen it once again, this time with Lukaku's agent, to the point where Lukaku himself had to come out on Instagram and put literally a mini statement out about how nobody speaks for him. So it's like, ugh, it's so annoying. A day after a cup final, his agent is just, why is he spewing this nonsense now? It's like, just spew it afterwards, if you know what I'm saying. It's just frustrating, but seven minutes in, we haven't even gone to predicted lineups. It's going to be a long preview, people. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about, obviously the press conference, yeah, like I said, Kovacic Kante, I think could play tomorrow, depending, just based on what Tuchel said, the front line. Um, in terms of, you said, Kai Abbott and Rom could, um, I mean, one of them will only play. So it's interesting to see what he's going to do around there. Um, before we get into the predicted lineups, and now I think the game's going to go in general and give score predictions, just wanted to bring up some transfer news for a bit. Um, Ivan Perisic from Inter Milan, 33 years old, he's had a very good season for Inter. I've heard um, that he's, he's been one of their best players this season, um, playing at left wing back. And it looks like Chelsea have agreed something with him. Um, for a free transfer. Now, Fabrizio Romano has come out and said Ivan Perisic has not agreed anything with any other club. Um, Inter still want to pursue talks and um, try to see if they can renegotiate and get uh, a new contract done. But um, other reports have said that Ivan Perisic has agreed a contract with Chelsea and it looks like once the takeover is complete, Ivan Perisic is Chelsea bound. So, yeah, we'll see what happens in terms of that. Me, personally, I would take Perisic for many reasons. One, he's experienced. Two, it's a free transfer, meaning he's not going to cost as much money in terms of wages. And on top of that, it, it makes us prioritise other positions that I think we'll heavily invest on, for example, in midfield. Another thing is, this won't ruin someone like Ian Matson's development. If we were to buy a, le a young left wing back, you think to yourself, well, we've got Chua, who's 26 or 25, and then we have this other young uh, wing back who's in his 20s as well early 20s mid 20s yeah you think to yourself what's gonna happen with Matson? where's his future gonna be with Paris it's just like he's 33 well we could get the best out of him for two years by that time Ian Matson could just be ready to slot in and be part of Chelsea's first team squad with a potential move a loan move for him to go to Dortmund Ian Matson. so I think this is a smart transfer in many ways he's experienced he's a tricky winger one-on-one -on -one ability something I think we've missed in those wing back positions that I don't think any of our wing backs including Reese James bring Reese James is very good at wing back but one thing that you know, um, it's sort of the difference in which I think wingers, uh, um, players that play at wing back is you need to also act like a winger because you're high up the pitch. And Reece James doesn't act like a winger, which is understandable. He is a defender at the end of the day. Perisic is a winger. He's a proper winger. Proper one-on-one, -on -one, tricky, got skill, can take on a player, go past him and then put a cross in. Reece James would need space to then put a cross in. You can't see Reece James going one-on-one -on -one with someone and trust him to go past him because he just doesn't have that ability about him to do that, if you know what I'm saying. So I think in so many ways, this would be a really, really smart transfer to get Ivan Perisic. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm sort of liking the way, you know, Chelsea are sort of moving in the business. Um, you know, Kunde 
could be got, you know, Ivan Perisic, you're looking at links at Khalidu, Koulibaly, Trumeni. Like I said, man, it's that time of the season, man, and there's going to be mad rumours linked um, everywhere. So at the end of the day, it is what it is, people. I would take Ivan Perisic, 33 years old, experienced, tricky winger, very good one-on-one, -on -one, could put in a cross, had a very good season with Inter. Got man of the match recently in the Coppa Italia final in which they beat Juventus 4-2 after extra time. So yeah, personally, why not in it? Um, Two-year contract. I think he'd be on like, what? I wouldn't expect him to be on more than 120k a week if I'm being quite honest with you. I'd be surprised. Considering his age as well. So yeah, we'll see what happens in terms of that. In terms of a predicted lineup now and what I think Thomas Duke is going to go with and why I think Thomas Duke is going to go with this team. It's very important tomorrow. Um, I think he's going to try go with a very strong team. Potentially his best team. Um, so, yeah, let's just get through it. Um, in goal, Edouard Mendy, simple as that. Um, in terms of Mendy, right, I know he's been moving a bit bookie these last couple um, weeks, especially since we came back from the international break. But it's Wembley tomorrow. It's a big game. Um, he's going to want to beat his compatriot, um, Sadio Mane, um, you know, and I think he'll be up for it. Um, the question is, if this goes to penalties, does he play in goal? In my opinion... It's a difficult one, but I would give it a shot. I'd, I'd, I'd try him. I'd say trust him. I'd say trust him. He's a big goalkeeper that could potentially um, intimidate the Liverpool players. He could. So in my opinion, trust him. Kepa's small, man. I know he's very good at diving. He's much better at diving quickly than Mendy is. But I feel like Mendy would just bring that intimidation. Six foot six, big goalkeeper. Waves his arms about. You get me doing all that jumping. You're going that way. You're going that way, son. So... We'll see in terms of that. But I think Mendy will play in goal tomorrow. The back three, Antonio Rudiger, um, really I think he'll be really determined for tomorrow. I know he's not been um, very, very good for us in recent games. Obviously, since it's been announced that, you know, he's pretty much going to Real Madrid. But hopefully he turns up tomorrow. I think he will give a trophy, help the team win and, uh, you know, um, leave Chelsea in the best possible way with a trophy, with an FA Cup medal around his neck. And I think he'll turn up tomorrow and pocket Salah once again and for the last time that we see at least in the Chelsea shirt so uh yeah hopefully Rudiger does that tomorrow I trust that he will he knows it's a big game he knows what this means to the fans he knows what this means to the players to the club to Todd um to everyone so I think he will turn up Thiago Silva the same um center center back play him he got that rest over midweek Christensen played so I think Thiago will come back in. He's got that week's rest. Hopefully he puts in a masterclass as well. He's got to deal with Sadio Mane, who will probably likely play up top alongside Salah on the right and Luis Diaz on the on the left. And speaking of Luis Diaz, Chalabar for me has to play at right centre-back. Um, I would normally play Aspilicueta because he's the captain and maybe he can show his leadership. But I can see Aspilicueta getting torn a new one against Luis Diaz. I can't lie. I think Chalabar, of all our right centre-backs, would have to deal with him the best. Realistically, I'd love to have two Reese Jameses because I'd play one Reese James at right centre back and the other Reese James at right wing back because that's how good Reese James is. But we don't have that, so for me, play Chalaba at right centre back for me because I think he'll be the best one to do with Luis Diaz. Obviously, in the last game, I'd say first 10, 15, 20 minutes he started off slow, but then for the rest of the game, for me, I think he 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 did really really well with him, uh, Luis Diaz. So. Yeah, um, Chalaba for me plays at right centre back. He's got that pace. He drives with the ball. He's good on the ball. One on one defending. He's hand he's handled Luis Diaz before. I trust him to do it again, um, because he's probably going to be the biggest threat to us tomorrow. Just in terms of that one on one ability, that sort of trickery that he has, that skill he has, um, that sort of unpredictability that he has to his game, Luis Diaz. And I feel like Chalaba of all our right centre backs, him, Christensen, and Aspi, I think he's the one who's up to the task and can deal with it the best, in my opinion. So, yeah, playing my right centre-back. The wing-backs, Alonso and Reese James, nothing to debate here. It has to be both of them. Yeah, uh, simple as that. In terms of the midfield now, the midfield now, the midfield. In my opinion, I'm going to, for this one, I'm going to give my opinion. In my opinion, the midfield for tomorrow should be Jorginho and Kovacic. But... I think Thomas Tuchel is going to take a risk tomorrow. If they are fit, both of them, I think he's going to play Kante and Kovacic. I think he's going to do it. For the reason that I said in my League Cup preview for Liverpool, the reason why I think he'll play Kante and Kovacic, if he has the opportunity to, if he wants to take that risk and he'll do it, is because Liverpool in the midfield are like workhorses. They press, they're quick on the ball, 
they're always on their toes, they're always 100% focused, they've got pace in their midfield, they've got, um, they've got trickery in their midfield, they've got intelligence in their midfield, they've got workhorses in their midfield. And I feel like in Kante and Kovacic, you'll get quality on the ball, you also have two workhorses, um, you also have intelligent play from both of them going forward and backwards as well. Jorginho is a very intelligent footballer, but I feel like some of his weaknesses in the game, and this is just on Tuchel's perspective, I feel like some of his biggest weaknesses could throw Tuchel off a bit. And I feel like if there's a team that can really take advantage of Jorginho's weaknesses, which is his lack of pace, um, sometimes on the ball he really takes too long and he can lose it easily. We've seen it before, people. Um, and I feel like Liverpool, with the way they work as a team in terms of just the, the the work rate they put in every game, I just feel like tomorrow would be a struggle for Jorginho in terms of that's what I think Tuchel, will just, his mindset, will just be at. Tomorrow could be a struggle for Jorginho. Big pitch like Wembley for him to cover that much grass as well. I'm not sure Tuchel's going to trust Jorginho for tomorrow's game, if I'm being honest. And I'm only basing that off what he said in the press conference today of saying... If he had the opportunity to pretty much risk both Kante and Kovacic, he's going to risk Kante and Kovacic and play them both. So for that reason, I think I think Kante and Kovacic is, are the two players that Tuchel would pick. I would pick Jorginho. I would actually trust him in this game. But from Tuchel's perspective, I think he'll think his weaknesses could harm us and actually help Liverpool in a way. That's what I think Tuchel's mind process is at. Because for him to say that he's going to risk them both, if he has the opportunity to, Kante and Kova, to risk them both if he has the opportunity to, that says a lot, people. That really says a lot about Jorginho, who has now been in training a few days. He's been fitter than both of them in recent times as well. So, yeah, that's just my opinion. The front three now. Mason's going to play. Mason's going to play. The two alongside him is difficult for me. Because it's like, there's reasons for me that I would like to play Lukaku. But there's also reasons why I'd like to play Kai Havertz. And then you're thinking about it. If Ron plays, will it be alongside Timo Werner or Pulisic? And it's the same with Kai. So it's like, who out the four would Tuchel play? Timo, Pulisic, Rom, or Kai? Because I, I feel like all four are going to bring something to the game. Mason's going to play regardless. Let's just keep that real. Mason is going to play regardless. The other four, though, to keep those two positions. Do you know what? I think he's going to play Romelu. And I think he's going to play Romelu alongside Timo Werner. Personally, I think he's going to do that. He's going to look at the last game and think, yo, the way we exploited Liverpool in behind and the way, and the way Romelu's cameo with Timo Werner in the League Cup final was good, he'll look at that and think, you know what? Two players have got pace. They've got power. They can both finish on their day at the very least, especially Timo Werner on his day can finish and strike a ball really well. In behind. Um, they've linked up pretty decently in recent times as well. He's really tried them both a lot. And in general, Tuchel said Kai Everton and Romelu Lukaku as a two doesn't work. Even though their characteristics, their characteristics and their playing styles should probably complement each other. But for some reason, they don't. Now, can I just say, me personally, I would actually play a front three of Mason, Pulisic and Romelu Lukaku. I think that's worked well in recent times. Um, I think... Mason has a good connection with Romelu. I think Pulisic is a big game player and also performs well in these types of games. Um, so, yeah, that would be my three. But I feel like it's going to be Timo Lukaku and Mason. I feel like that creativity of Mason and then you've got the pace of Timo Werner to stretch Liverpool's defence. And then you've got Romelu Lukaku who can maybe be a nuisance to Van Dijk and Matip even though the last time Lukaku played against both he didn't really do that well. Van Dijk pretty much pocketed him and so did Matip. But I think he's going to go with that for tactical reasons. Um, it's pretty much tactical tweaks versus form. Because Pulisic's on form. But you could easily see Kai Havertz and Timo play together. Who have both not been great recently. Or you could see a mixture of tactical tweaks and form. Where you see Timo's there for tactical reasons. He's not there because of form. And Romelu is in there because of tactical... Because of form. Sorry, guys, I just saw a creature fly around me. So, yeah, um, <laughs> I'll see you guys whenever I see you guys. Um, score prediction. You know, give me a second. bro. I am so sorry, guys. Oh, my days. Um, I just had to deal with a creature just flying around my room. Um, when it's that time of the summer, these creatures want to come out. But 
anyway, yeah, that's my predicted lineup, guys. You already um seen it. That's what I think Tuchel's gonna go with. Just quickly, Mendy and goal, back three, Rudiger, Thiago Silva, and Chalaba, wing backs, Reese James. And Marcus Alonso, I think he's going to go with Kovacic and Kante in the pivot. Now I think the front three is going to be Mason Mount, Romelu Lukaku and Timo Werner. That's the team that I think he's going to go with. The tweaks that I would do is replace Kante for Jorginho because I don't think Kante's fit enough. And I would replace um, Timo Werner with Pulisic in my opinion. So that's the only changes that I would make personally that I think um, Tuchel would go with. So yeah, score prediction. I'm going to go with a... Uh... Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with a 3-2 Chelsea win after extra time. I think we'll win this in extra time. So, yeah, that's my prediction. Tell me yours below. I'm really sorry that this is a long, long preview, but there was a lot to say um, and there was a lot to explain. So, yeah, um, I'll see you guys tomorrow for my match review and the player ratings video as well. So, yeah, I'll see you guys then. Have a good one. And hopefully we can win our third trophy of the season tomorrow and stop Liverpool's quad dreams. Anyway, see you guys later.